superpowers. <laughs> All right. Did I get to you? All right. Um, Proceed, I, I'll, Maestro. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the intro. I, <laughs> um, it was my, my question that, that spawned the class, so I, I guess I'll, I'll <laughs> have to own that for the, for the top of the call. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, this week... We're back at home. I've been away for a bit. It's been, I moved out to California, as I mentioned, and a new job, things like that. It's been uh, quite a, it's, it's been, it's been quite a bit, a lot of change. And so a lot to sort of incorporate in. And this week we're actually talking about really specific change. Um, uh, I've, I'm getting my second vaccine shot in a week. I was just talking to Liz. She was telling me, you know, make sure you take some Tylenol and drink a lot of water. She just got hers and it was a whole thing. And, uh, the whole world is, is sort of shifting around. Uh, and it seems like all these sort of safety calculations and, and rules I put in place for myself are all kind of changing. And um, change seems a little scary to me. It's all happening so fast. Happened very fast on the way in as well. Um, but it's, it's an interesting spot where there's the opportunity to actually move maybe a little bit slowly in our minds and our meditations and things like that and find what feels like safety, find what feels like, um, where is my where is my trust and what, what are the things I want to change? What are the risks I want to take? Are they even risks? And actually find what's comfortable for me. Um, because the world's going to do what the world does, it seems. And there's going to be very conflicting opinions all the way from this side, that side to sides I didn't even realize were sides. But actually, it's an opportunity where I can find some trust in feels right for me and trust that I am, can live my life from that place. So that was a question I went to Punsak with. It's just sort of, um, you know, how do I incorporate a changing scenario, a changing situation and still find uh, a comfortable place to be in the middle of it. And from there, come out and engage with the world. So. We'll have a little bit of that today. Um, we'll appeal to Punsak and his own personal experience there. If anyone's new, Punsak has a vast wealth of knowledge of background in Tibetan Buddhism. And that's, that's really the wisdom that gets shared here each week and uh, that's, or every other week, apologies. And um, that's what we get to lean in and, and touch for a moment and have that inform our own lives in a way that affects us day to day. So I'll turn it over to Punsak and please take it away. Help us. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So uh, well, I had my second shot uh, yesterday. And today's supposed to be the, the day when uh, you feel the effects. So I'm feeling a bit. I'm feeling a bit as if I got drunk. <laughs> so you might see a different personality tonight. So if you if you do see that, it's not me. Okay, it's the medication. <laughs> okay, uh, it seems like uh, the side effects are starting to go down right now. They were much stronger earlier today. The almost as if you were about to catch a cold kind of thing. The body aches, the chills, the headache, those kinds of things. And they're very like it's like I'm moving like uh, I'm a thousand years old. So like uh, my legs they move, <laughs> and it takes like my legs like five minutes to. Say, oh, what did you say? <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. But uh, some of you know me uh, when things like this hit me, the part of my body that responds and hold on to it is my, yeah, it's my, my lungs. So my voice will not sound uh, as usual. There might be times when I have to hold myself from coughing or something. Okay. I hope it doesn't happen while we're meditating. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's a, a very nice topic to talk about. Uh, oh, uh, normal. What is normal? Now that we're going back to it. And what are we supposed to do when we are back to normal? Do we want normal to be back? <laughs> uh, I'm sure... Uh, I'm sure a lot of us are somewhat used to what's happening right now to the state of the world right now. And this seems to be normal for now. And there's a yearning for a normal that we remember and we, we want to go back to it. And perhaps this wanting to go back to that normal, uh, maybe it's, that's the normal that we are thinking of. Maybe that's not what we are really yearning for. It's just that we are so... Uh, we are so shaken by what's going on that a sense of normalcy uh, seems, to, seems to have been lost and we want to go back to it. So that normalcy that we are yearning for, perhaps it's not the normal, the normal that, we, that we think of. We're gonna look into that, okay? All right, so get yourself ready to meditate. Communicate to your body. Communicate to your entire being by holding the intention, I'm going to enter meditation. And feel the body responding, feel the natural intelligence in the body responding to this invocation, to this call to enter meditation, to enter into our natural state. And by merely holding on to this intention, already the process has started. Allow yourself to be aware of the subtle shifts that are already taking place. The, the letting goes, the moving towards that are taking place in the body, in the breath, in the mind. And when you feel an impulse to make adjustments in the body, immediately let yourself know that this impulse is coming from a communication from the natural intelligence of the body communicating to us. And welcome this communication. Welcome the advice coming from this natural intelligence of the body. Let it guide you. It knows how the body should be placed, how the body should be positioned, so it can be as conducive as possible to enter meditation. Whatever adjustments it suggests with the legs, make the adjustments. And as you make the adjustments, notice the signs that you're entering meditation are arising, the calm, the pleasantness. Gently take the light of your awareness to your torso. Feel how the torso gives you a sense of alertness, attentiveness, while at the same time, comfort. Be aware of the arms, even relaxed. Let that intelligence guide you how to position the hands. And keep noticing the signs slowly arising, the calming, the pleasantness. And upon entering those spaces, rejoice. Bring attention to the head and neck, 
allow them to be so centered so that they hold themselves in place. There's no conscious need to hold them in place. No need to prevent them from falling to the sides, to the back or forward because they are centered. mouth, teeth, tongue resting in their natural places, eyes resting softly. And gently come to the breath. No need to control the breath. As you breathe in, know you are breathing in. As you breathe out, know you are breathing out. No need to chase away anything, no need to reject any experience, no need to grasp onto any experience. No need to force the mind to focus on the breath. And begin to make contact with the pleasantness that's natural to the breath. And by bringing awareness to this pleasantness natural to the breath, notice the breath naturally calming. And because the breath is calming, it has an effect on the body, bringing the body deeper into this calm, deeper into this pleasantness. And these in turn pull the mind into a space of calm deeper into a space of pleasantness. Notice that in the body, rejoice. In the breath, rejoice. In the mind, rejoice. Knowing that these are signs that you're right here, right now, approaching, abiding ever more in ever more subtle consciousness, powerful means to bring about transformation. Know that right here, right now, what you are sensing as mere calm in the body, mere pleasantness, these are crumbs, shadows of crumbs coming from your natural state. Now make the intention, the commitment to fully enter the meditative state. Holding on to that intention, we sort of sign the contract of this commitment with a deep breath. So feel ready, make last minute adjustments and feeling thoroughly ready in body, in mind, in breath, Take a nice deep breath in through the nose and through the mouth, release. And as you release, let go, let go. Let yourself go deeper into the sense of calm in the body. Let yourself go deeper into the pleasantness in the body. Let yourself go deeper into the calm in the breath. Let yourself go deeper into the pleasantness in the breath. Keep letting go, keep letting go. Leave the breath alone. Let the breath return to its own rhythm and just stay with that momentum of letting go, letting go, letting go. Noticing the signs enhancing in the body. Noticing the signs enhancing in the breath. Rejoice. Noticing the signs enhancing in the mind. Rejoice. And if you have inner sensations arising immediately, rejoice, net telling yourself these are signs of the clarity and the radiance of the mind. Rejoice. And keep in that momentum of letting go, letting go, letting go. And as you continue to let go, 
physically you feel yourself entering into a deeper space of calm and pleasantness. Energetically, you feel yourself entering into that space where there is clarity, where there is radiance. Find any of these signs that you find most appealing to you, strongest for you, that you feel drawn towards, either the visual signs, the signs of the sound that you may be hearing, or the tactile energetic sensations you may be feeling, or the pleasantness, or the sense of calm, whichever is strongest for you, or you feel more strongly connected to, stay aware of it. Now with the intention to stabilize and deepen, with that intention, staying aware of that sign. Now again, through the nose, gently, fully breathe in. And as you breathe out through the mouth, let yourself go into that sign. Go into that sign, deeper into that sign, deeper into that calm, deeper into that pleasantness, deeper into that clarity, radiance. Staying with the depth that you've reached, with the new strength of that sign, staying there, feeling that you are indeed deeper into meditative state. Again, for the second time, another full breath, gently, fully through the nose, breathe in. And through the mouth, breathe out. Let yourself go, let yourself go, going deeper into the calm, deeper into the pleasantness, deeper into the clarity, deeper into the radiance. The signs getting stronger, more and more vivid, more and more present. Staying in that depth, staying in that strength, staying aware of it again for the third and last full breath through the nose, breathe in. And again, through the mouth, let go. And take a moment to simply acquaint yourself with that new space. And as you acknowledge the signs that it is indeed a new space, rejoice. The new sense of calm, the level of pleasantness, wherever it may be. The inner sensations, whether they are visual, whether they are sound, whether they are tactile, notice them and rejoice. And know that right here, right now, you are abiding in a more subtle level of consciousness. This level of consciousness is more powerful. Now gently staying in that level of awareness, noticing, being sensitive to the signs, their strength, gently bring your attention to the space in front of you at the level of your eyebrows. And begin to feel a sensation in the forehead. Some people immediately start to see light. So whatever the sensation, immediately know that it is a sign of the presence of your potential, a sign of your natural ability to focus. And as you feel that sensation, however it may manifest for you as pressure, as heat, as tingling, however it manifests for you, Stay aware of it and keep relaxing as you stay aware of it. And begin to think about that day in some dimension where time doesn't exist, where you have already reached enlightenment. Some future time when it's already a reality.
where there is no longer dysfunctional ways of relating with reality, with yourself. And as you continue to think about this future enlightened self, notice how the sensation in the forehead is getting stronger. And begin to yearn to get a glimpse of this magnificent you. And as you strongly yearn, and as the sensation in the forehead gets stronger, you begin to see an aperture opening in time and space. And behind this aperture, there's an intense light almost like all the suns in the universe gathering into one point. And as the light rays are being emitted through this small, tiny aperture, some of the lights are split and you see a rainbow around this tiny aperture of intense white light surrounded by rainbow lights. And the aperture begin to expand, expand. And there's a deep curiosity within you. What could be behind this intense light? And eventually the aperture is big enough and you can see what is causing this bright light. It is the magnificent, beautiful you, your enlightened self, your future enlightened self. You can see your future enlightened self because enlightenment is beyond time, beyond space. And when you see this incredible, beautiful being, and you know it is your own continuum, it is connected to your own continuum, you have such joy. And think about what did I do to become this beautiful, bright being? Who did I rely on? Who did I? What did I rely on? What community supported me? What practices did I do that made me become this incredibly bright, beautiful being? And towards those things and towards this enlightened being, which is you. You feel a great sense of reverence. The, that trusting relationship you've always wanted to have you feel it naturally present. You trust wholeheartedly. And you place your trust in your enlightened self. You place your trust in all those conditions 
all those relationships that made it possible for you to become this being. Wherever they may be, whether they're in your life now, whether they were in your life, whether you are to encounter them, feel connected to them all and see what their relationship with you has brought forth in you and you feel great trust. Great gratitude. And as you look at your beautiful, gorgeous self, bright, and yet the light is not blinding or burning, it is soothing. It embraces you with a feeling of being enveloped by love, being seen, being cared for. A deep feeling of connection. A deep, you can feel a strong concern for your welfare, for your happiness. And you wish to cut the time that it will take to become this being. So you beg this being, how did I become you? Please teach me, come into my life. Show me how to become you. And you see, a delightful smile beaming at you. Like, I've been waiting for you to ask me this question for so long. I've been wanting to do exactly that. So open your heart, open your mind. Let the one who knows you best show you how to become your best. And gently, your enlightened future self comes to the crown of your head, shining brightly like a million suns. And yet the rays are not burning, they are loving. And because you are ready, your mind is open. It is transmitting to you, this is what you have done to become me. And just stay with your heart and mind open while you receive light from your enlightened self. Keep relaxing. Keep receiving. And if your mind is moving, if your thoughts are moving, deliberately bring them to the sentiments of reverence, trust, and gratitude. Keep letting go. Let the light push you deeper towards your natural state. Let the calm be calmer. Let the pleasantness 
transform into ecstasy. Let the inner sensation become pure clarity, pure radiant light. And perhaps every once in a while, someone comes into your mind and you may sense, ah, this is why I should be grateful to this person's presence in my life. This is how this person may have helped me get closer in this beautiful being. And you relax, you go deeper. And gently being ready to arise from the meditation. Your bright, enlightened self smiles at you. And in a flash becomes just a spark of light, even though it is microscopic almost in size, it is still as brilliant as a million suns. And gently, it descends through the crown of your head. Relax, let go. Gently arriving in the very center of your heart. Relax, let go. And a burst of light occurs as soon as it enters the very center of your heart. And you feel connected to the guidance you've always wanted. that voice of authority and certainty and love that arises within your own heart. And see the light radiating throughout your body, creating an aura around, around you. In the center of that bright light is the center of your heart. Your senses are infused with that light. So you hear the light of, of your inner being. You see through the light of your inner being. Every ways of relating is coming from the light emanating from your heart. Okay, with that, Gently go back 
to just the space of the meditation, feeling the calm, the pleasantness, feeling the clarity and the radiance, feeling the focus, wherever they may be in the body, in the breath or the mind, rejoice. And with that joy, make the intention to arise. And just like you entered, you will arise a night's deep breath through the nose, gently, fully breathe in. Through the mouth, breathe out. And slowly let your senses reconnect with your immediate surroundings, your sense of touch, knowing the temperature again the feel of the clothing on you, deliberately hearing the different sounds and slowly allowing your eyes to see light, shadows, colors, shapes. All right. Uh, this is a, a special meditation that I do at times when I feel desperately in need of something like that. <laughs> uh, I hope you can find some benefit from it. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, to the topic at hand. We're going back to normal. Yay! <laughs> normal is coming back. Normal is coming back. <laughs> and what is that? <laughs> I think we've lost touch with that. Uh, I mean, in my office, uh, where I work, yes, I work in an office too. <laughs> uh, uh, probably I would say 99% of the staff has been working remotely since March. I don't think uh, any of them wants to come back to the office. <laughs> Every once in a while, uh, you, you will see one of them sort of show up in the office and, and they don't stay. I mean, they come and they stay for a day and then that's it, you don't see them any, again, All right? So uh, staying home is becoming uh, the new normal for them. And I think for a lot of us, uh, we are somewhat accustomed to, what, to the state of things as they are. But a lot of us still yearn for something that, we, that we, we think we were used to that is not present. And we want to go back to it, a sense of what you might call normal. And unfortunately, for a lot of, I'm, I'm hearing uh, uh, a lot of young, very young uh, people are, are not taking this, uh, 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 not take, taking this well. Uh, I hear, hear that uh, very sadly, the suicide rate among, uh, I guess, teenagers and around that age, around that age group are committing suicide. So what is it that they are missing that is so devastating for them that they feel like taking their life is much better. What is this normal that they, we want to go back to? Uh, and so there's sort of good news and bad news. Which one do you want first? The bad news or the good news? <laughs> well, I'll give, it to you. I'll give you the bad news first. Uh, well, it's not really the bad news. It's really uh, a matter of fact kind of news. It's not like now we are in samsara. We were always in samsara. And what, is, what is samsara? Samsara, remember, is not a place. It's a condition. What is that condition? It's a condition of existing without wisdom. It is existing where we are uh, actively uh, uh, motivated through misunderstanding of reality. That's samsara. So samsara is not a place, 
And I'm sure all of you know that, but every once in a while, we feel that we need to hear it because there's a part of us that wants it to be a place because it would be easier if it was a place. Like if this place is samsara, I could just leave this place and I'll be out of samsara. But that's not what samsara is, unfortunately. It's not just a place. It is a condition. And this condition is within us. And wherever we go, we bring that condition with us. If, if somehow uh, some enlightened being were to give you uh, uh, a 20 minutes <laughs> experience of nirvana, uh, because the, the tendency and the condition that we have for ourselves is grasping onto samsara, once, once that experience is, is, is finished, we will find ourselves back in samsara again. Uh, and sometimes we may have some profound experiences, you could say that is nirvanic, uh, experiences that are connected to bliss, experiences that are connected to wisdom, understanding, but they're, 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 they don't last for too long. But they give us hope. They give us hope that it is possible that this mode of existing, of existing can be brought to an end. We don't have to exist this way. And why is it that we should not, we do not want to exist this way? Uh, connected and uh, simultaneous with the, with the experience of samsara is suffering. And suffering is, uh, is exactly not, ex not living with truth, not living with wisdom. That's what suffering is. So in a sense, not living, not existing with a, with a full intimate understanding of who we are, without, without a full understanding, without a full experience of what is it, that, what, 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 what is it about this, this place that I find myself in, these experiences that I'm having. When, when we don't understand them, and when we not only don't understand them from a place of I don't know, but rather from a place of I know what it is, this is what it is. And it is not in, in alignment with what experience is, with, it's not in alignment with who we really are, that brings suffering. So in a sense, you could say suffering is, is a call to return to who we really are. It is a reminder that we are not who we really are. That's what the suffering is. <laughs> so, and, and the reason I mentioned that is because uh, the pandemic, of course, has caused a lot of suffering. Uh, some people, uh, there are some people who you know who have, may have suffered from this and they survived and yet they've had, they, now they have long-term side effects. And unfortunately, there are some people who have not survived, okay? Uh, and there are a lot of things going on around just fueling divisiveness, fueling uh, basically giving samsara more fuel. Whether we are not directly experiencing the suffering of what's going on of this pandemic, we shouldn't say that it doesn't exist. And in whatever way some people wish to, some people wish to uh, name it, what, what's going on. But let us not be uh, arrogant to say that uh, my opinion of this is the correct way to, to correct perspective. Okay. And I think it is because of uh, 
is actually a, a sign of a wonderful uh, evolution that is taking place. We are actually evolving. It's a sign that we are actually evolving, that we can have our own opinions, that we are not afraid to have our own, own opinions. But what we have to remember, an opinion is an opinion. An opinion is not fact, it's not truth. It is telling us that there is a perspective that I have and it is not the full perspective. And the very reason that we feel I, I, am, I, I am free to hold my opinion is because you don't want someone to impose an opinion upon you. But because we don't want, and, and that is coming from an under, a deeper understanding, you could say, not everyone here, you know, not everyone has the full picture yet. And because we have that understanding that because not everyone has the full picture, I feel free, I feel liberated to seek a, a, a different perspective. And be, just because I feel free to have a different perspective and I come with, a, with, a, with, a, with an opinion, it is not to say now you have something where you can uh, discard whatever, else, whatever other people say, okay? Uh, and the reason I'm coming about, about this is the opinions, the, the, the seemingly opinions that are going on about what, what is really going on. All of a sudden, people have become masters of intelli gathering intelligence, and they are certain as to what's really going on, even though they just, they, they have a completely different occupation. Uh, somehow they can uh, have pure intelligence as to what is, what is really going on. Not that, not that it's, it's not possible, but it is possible. But when, when we hold on fast to our own opinions, what we are doing, we are uh, shutting ourselves from being able to learn. Not only are we shutting ourselves from being able to learn, we are also undermining, we are also we are also weakening our capacity to have proper discernment. Proper discernment is let go of all your presupposed ideas of what's supposed to be and allowing your mind to encounter reality as it is. Then you will have proper discernment. And remember when we read from that, uh, from that text, when someone says, uh, my opinion is this. Uh, this is how I understand it. And that it is said that person has proper discernment, understanding that this is just my understanding. This is just how I understand it. That's proper discernment. And open to other views, open to other ways of uh, other perspectives. <laughs> Lining these uh, opinions that we are always in, that we are in samsara, and we, we will not always be here, and we will not always be in the condition of samsara. Uh, no one can force us to, no one can extract us from samsara because our, our very nature is freedom. Our very nature is freedom itself, and because our very nature is freedom itself, no one can force an identity on us. So an identity that you find yourself holding onto, we participated in holding that identity. Okay. It may, yes, it may have come from someone else, but we accepted it. There's always a participation from our part, from what we are, from, uh, to, to what we are experiencing. Now, right now, it seems abnormal that uh, uh, like this, for example, this is to be in a home where everybody used to gather together in a circle, have tea, <laughs> sometimes have uh, biscuits together. Uh, no, but this is how we are doing this right now. Uh, does that mean before it was normal and this is abnormal? Uh, This 
pandemic is normal for samsara. Okay? And everything that happens in, in, in our, every, every experience that we encounter is an opportunity to grow. Everything that we experience, everything that we encounter is an opportunity to grow. An opportunity to transform this condition of being in samsara. Transform this condition of living uh, with ignorance, not knowing who we really are. And it's not that, I'm not going to give you some new age BS saying that somehow this, this pandemic is a gift. It's a gift from the cosmos or something like that. Some people might say that. I'm not saying that they're wrong, but uh, what I'm saying is it is an opportunity also. It's an opportunity for what? It's an opportunity for us to grow our compassion. It's an opportunity for us to grow our connection. And I think, unfortunately, that is the thing that is deeply uh, felt as missing among the, 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 the youth who are committing suicide, the sense of connection. Even though we have this, this technology where here I am in one, one side of the world and you are on the other side of the world, and we seem to be connecting. As you speak, I hear. I see you. As I speak, you hear me. But there is a sense of distance. Why is there a sense of distance? Even though I seem, I seem to be looking at you, what I'm really, I know deep within me, what I'm looking at is this, this computer. Yes, I, I, when I'm looking at you, I sort of lose the computer. The computer goes away, the room goes away, and I think I am seeing just you. I'm seeing some heads. <laughs> I'm seeing some half <laughs> torsos <laughs> and I'm accepting it. Oh, that's you. Okay. Uh, uh, so this gives us a sense of connection, but deeper, deeper inside, there's something, there's a, a kind of connection that is missing. And, and you could say this pandemic is we can use this pandemic as an opportunity to really appreciate our connections. We can use this pandemic to really grow our compassion. So whatever your opinions are about the vaccine, whether it's coming, whether it is Martians who invented it to enslave us or whatever it is that you have in your mind, uh, there is a sense that uh, the, the lockdowns, the wearing masks and all that kind of stuff, uh, uh, being able to have physical uh, contact with other people, being in their physical presence in, in a greater gathering, that seems to be coming up. Is that normal? Is that what you want to go back to? What is normal for samsara is what fuels and nourishes samsara. Okay? What is natural for samsara, what is natural for, for ignorance, what is natural, the natural conditions for, for ignorance, fuels ignorance, nourishes ignorance. And what do I mean by that? Samsara is a condition, is a set of conditions. These sufferings that we are experiencing, and right now we are experiencing the suffering of pandemic. But that's not the only thing that we are, we are experiencing. So many other things have come to the surface. Some beautiful things have come to the surface. Some uh, people have made beautiful connections and some people, their fears have been brought to the surface and is guiding them, and they're acting out of that. Some people are acting out of the greater sense of connection. Some people are acting out of their fear. All that you, you, is, is, that's what this very condition is providing us. Okay. So the condition that 
that creates samsara, the conditions that allow for samsara to continue. In the very, na in the very nature of samsara, there's the condition to perpetuate itself. And the conditions that allows for samsara to perpetuate itself is driven by this misunderstanding. And because of this misunderstanding about who you are, where you are, not admitting that we, don't, we really don't know, they create dysfunctional ways, dysfunctional means of relating with ourselves and dysfunctional ways of relating with others. And is, it is the, through these dysfunctional ways of dealing with others that we find ourselves in complete confusion. We are confused because there are times it seems like anger is right. And there are times when we seem like when we put anger aside, there's something about anger that we are missing. There's something about it that we are missing. Should we completely toss it aside? Is there a way to be angry and yet still evolve? Is there something about jealousy? Is there something about pride? And the reason that we cling on to them is because somehow we believe that they will help us arrive at a place where we want to arrive at. We, we will help us arrive outside of samsara. But so far, because of our misunderstanding, we don't know how to make use of these energies, the anger, the jealousy, and so forth, attachment, and so forth. And because we relate from a place of dysfunction, then we create entire worlds in our heads, in our minds, that we are absolutely convinced is a world that we're that world that we have created in our mind is a world outside that we are experiencing. We see enemy and we are convinced that enemy and what should be done to enemy, enemy must be destroyed. And we lose sight of what is it that we are yearning for? We are yearning for ourselves. We are yearning to really know ourselves. That's what we are yearning for. That's the normal that we are yearning for. So just because everyone gets vaccinated and now people will, will be, the crowded bus will be crowded again, the crowded trains will be crowded again, and a lot of people will be walking in the streets again, and the office, and the offices will be filled with people. That's not normal. That kind of normal, we don't want that kind of normal anymore. And, I'm, and, and the normal that I'm referring to is not necessarily the appearance of it, but rather when we are now are able to meet with strangers, many more strangers than before, when we are, when we are out there again meeting uh, people, encountering lives, in, encountering sentient beings, how are we going to relate with them? so that we can go beyond normal. The way we relate with our experiences determine the future experiences. The way we are dealing personally with this, what, what this thing that is happening globally, it will determine how we will experience the next one. Remember, it's not the first time the earth human beings are experiencing pandemics. Let's not, let's not behave, let's not think ourselves as being very special that somehow for the first time in the history of humanity, there was something called pandemic. And we have no idea what to do. Oh my God, oh my God, pandemic this is the first time.
And it's, I, don't, I don't think it will be the last. And when we realize that we are experiencing this, we are experiencing this. And if we take the perspective of compassion rather than self-preservation, you don't have to worry about self-preservation. Self-preservation will take care of itself. We don't have to worry about that. But rather take the perspective of compassion. And if we take the perspective of compassion, that, that, will, that will take care of everything. And this is something that I've, I've said many times. And it is, if, if imagine somehow on this planet, when this pandemic first arrived, immediately the way we responded towards it was with compassion for each other. We would not be over a year into the same thing. Where right now, uh, this is, it seem, it's, it's gone in one place and it, goes, it comes back again in, in, that, in that place. And people are freaking out, people are getting scared, people are becoming anxious. Deal with this out of, with compassion. That is, the, that is the medicine. That is the medicine. Compassion. Have compassion for yourself. Have compassion for others. And if normal before this pandemic, what we experienced was a struggle with, with, with compassion, when let this be the moment for you when normal comes back, that your practice of compassion becomes even stronger. And you, we will fail because it is practice. That's what practice means. We will try and we will fail but we keep trying and we get stronger, we get stronger. And there will be times when it seems like you're being compassionate, but you're not being compassionate. But that's the, that's, that, that's the progress. That's the stages that we have to go through, okay? Don't beat yourself up when you notice that, ah, I'm not as compassionate as I, will, as I should be. It's, it's a practice. So whenever you have an opportunity, practice it. If only time you can practice it is in your mind, then do that if that's all you can do. Then eventually it will, it will, it will be an outward expression of, your, of everything that you do, of every mode of your relating. And as we make ourselves uh, more and more connected to compassion, more and more expressions of compassion, then the wisdom will naturally trickle in. Because there's something very, 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 uh, there's a strong connection between wisdom and compassion. In fact, when you take one of them, you go deeper into it. And you go as deeply as you can into wisdom. On the other side of that, you will find compassion. And that means when you go deep into compassion, on the other side of that, you will find wisdom. And don't, as far as wisdom training is concerned, is to remind ourselves and be humble. I don't know. I don't know. And someone is presenting you their opinion. Sounds good. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to uh, kick the person out because they have that opinion. And be humble and be sincere. I don't know. And this is as much as I know. And is it really as much as you know? And that's practicing wisdom, being honest with what you know. And, that's, and that will allow us to invite wisdom to come in. This is an invitation for wisdom when we are humble, when we admit exactly what we know and we admit what we do not know. And as far as compassion is concerned, start with yourself and, it, and make yourself into everyone you encounter. How would you want to be treated? How would you want to be treated? Okay. So the lesson is always the same. 
in samsara, the dysfunctional ways of relating with each other will naturally gain strength. And since wisdom and compassion are against the tide of samsara, it will be difficult in the beginning. There are times you will want to be compassionate, but because of the conditioning, the strong conditioning of not being very practiced with compassion, you may find it difficult. There might be some people for whom you find difficult to have compassion for. Then what do you do at those times? Do you beat yourself on the head? Do you pretend to have compassion? No, you admit it. This is the limit of my compassion now. And that's wisdom. Okay. And it is when we relate with the world out of compassion, with desire for wisdom. That is what will give us safety. That is the only safety. And don't allow your compassion to be what, you might, uh, what is referred to as stupid compassion. Always align compassion with wisdom. Uh, for it to be real compassion, it has a long vision. It must have a long vision. It's not only to, uh, to satisfy the immediate time, the, uh, what's happening in the immediate, uh, in, your Im in the immediate, immediate what? In the immediate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But rather, compassion must have a long vision. It must see that uh, it, right now it may be painful, but the actual, the eventual outcome will be the removal of pain, the removal of suffering. Okay. So make sure, make sure your compassion is connected to long vision, not short, short sighted. Not that you should not have compassion where you address something immediately. But make sure it's not going to seemingly take care of a problem in the, in the immediate, few, in immediate uh, time pre present. And yet it might cause much more problems in the future. And how do you know which one you have to do? Trial and error. You feel this is the compassionate thing to do and you act out of it and you are open. You're open to wisdom to continue to guide you. Was that the right thing to do with all these conditions? Was there, there, was there something that I missed that I didn't know, that I didn't see? And you open yourself. Then if it actually is something that benefits in the long run, then, you, then you've learned something. This works and with these conditions involved. And if it help maybe in the immediate time and yet it harms in the future, then now you, you've learned also. And, and we wish we could uh, go in a cave until we become perfectly compassionate, then come out, then relate, relate, with, relate with others. Unfortunately, uh, all the caves are taken. <laughs> there are no more caves, people. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta do this in your apartment in your home <laughs> and and because we are constantly surrounded by poisonous people and i'm not, I'm not saying poisonous people as you know like pointing fingers as oh poison people Ugh. but poisonous people in the sense that these are opportunities for us to grow okay samsara throws poisonous people at you because the natural response of some, the, the natural samsaric response is to respond with a dysfunction. And then that keeps you, keeps you both in samsara, ties us deeper into samsara. 
but rather when samsara throws poison at you, you transform it. When you are in the presence of poisonous people, ooh, one second, a uh, you were able to do one second of compassion, and that's all you could do? Yay, I did one second of compassion, and leave. <laughs> Don't stay there, because the natural impulse will come back, and then you know, the dysfunctional way of relating may come back, okay? But uh, as, uh, whenever you can, either as soon as you encounter the poisonous uh, people, poisonous uh, situations, try to bring compassion, try to bring wisdom. And you, of course, it will take practice. And in whatever way you can understand wisdom, you bring that, you bring that, you bring that, you bring that in. But the, the most powerful wisdom is to simply be with what is, allowing it and admitting exactly what, the, what is your actual experience. Okay? That's the most powerful wisdom. And that's this practice of wisdom that leads to the big wisdom. Okay? Basically being honest with whatever it is. Okay? I'm a jerk. If you're a jerk and you say you're a jerk, then that's wisdom, <laughs> okay? But if you're a jerk and you're pretending not to be a jerk and you don't know that you're a jerk, then that's ignorance, okay? If you are pretending to be compassionate, but you don't, you don't feel it and you don't admit it, that's ignorance. But if you admit it, I want to be compassionate, I'm, I'm not touching it, I'm not feeling it, that's wisdom. Okay? Whenever you are truthful, whenever you're honest with whatever is going on, you're practicing wisdom. Okay. And, and know that compassion is a protector. Whenever, to whatever degree, you can even just tell yourself, I wish I was compassionate. And that's all. If, that, if, if that's all you can do, then that's a powerful practice because it is honest. So how do you protect yourself? The vaccine may not protect you. It may protect you, may not protect you. But protect you from what? What is it gonna be protecting you from? Is it gonna protect you from samsara? Not that you shouldn't, you shouldn't take the vaccine, but know the true safety is when, you're no, when we are no longer driven by our misunderstanding of reality, when we are not no longer confused about our natural connection. Connection is not something that we have to go out and do. It's something that is already there. Be open to the connection that is already here. When we keep seeking connection outside, we will never find it. It's not because you're appearing on a, on a monitor, on a laptop. That is not what the connection is. That, is. that is not that, oh, now we are connected. We are not now connected. We've always been connected. And we will understand that. That will help us with our strength and our compassion. We are connected, always being connected. It is ignorance that makes us not feel the connection that is naturally there. Ah. Uh, there were some other things. Uh, yes, about um, what do you think is going to happen when uh, we'll be back to normal? <laughs> People are going to feel that I was imprisoned for, or for over a year. Now I'm going to go out and put myself in danger. <laughs> Somehow that's supposed to be fun. Putting your, putting your life in danger. 
and 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 that would be like it's like take on the mindset that created this problem in the first place. Now really go deeper into this into this mindset. Is recognize there is a there is a sense of pre, the preciousness preciousness of life. You sense it. That's why you are so touched when you see suffering. There's a deep understanding of the preciousness of life. Stay connected to that preciousness of life. You don't need to put your life in danger in order for you to appreciate it. Okay? That's looking for connection outside of you. That's basically looking for connection where connection doesn't exist. That's why it is a futile thing to do. We will only encounter further suffering. When we don't feel connected, we just have to relax and be aware of the connection that is already there. Okay. And yes, there are outward signs of recognizing this connection. When we call someone, ask them, how are you? When you have dinner with someone, that is an outward sign of a recognition of a connection that is already there. It's not then that you're making the connection. It's just strengthening it. Because unfortunately, in samsara, it is very easy to lose awareness of that connection. And, and the last thing I'm going to say is warning. is also a piece of advice and opinion. Don't go back to normal. <laughs> okay. Don't, please don't go back to normal. Take from this the best lesson that you can and continue. Okay, continue to evolve. All right. Uh, just in case someone may have thought that I would be talking about the many ideas, companions that there are out there about vaccine. Sorry, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> That's something more fundamental, I think. Okay. Whether that's a vaccine or not, compassion is relevant. When this pandemic is gone, compassion is relevant. Okay. Okay. Right. And this is the time that we have tea and uh, open the floor for questions. Anyone has any questions? Hi, Pansa. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I do. Hey, Lugo. Hi, um, this is Kirit. Um, but firstly, I just want mm -hmm. to say thank you so much for such a beautiful session. Um, this was so helpful, and I really appreciate it. Um, is my sound okay? Yes, I, you sound... Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, a question I have, which <laughs> I already know the answer to, but I'm hoping you'll, you'll say something else, I think. Okay. Um, you know, I, I really enjoy these meditations because I find that in the chaos of life, connecting to my potential feels like the only stable place that I can really take refuge. But you know, what, what do we do when that feels so far away and still everything is in, you know, everything is fluctuating? Like, where do we take refuge then when it doesn't feel like even the potential is 
is a potential. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Like it just yeah, feels yeah. so far away. Mm -hmm. uh, and this uh, again, another, another opportunity to practice uh, wisdom. The thing is, admit exactly what you're feeling. It feels distant. That's what's going on. And try not to force another experience all of a sudden it feels close again. So at the moment when it feels distant, know exactly what is, what is my experience right here, right now with the feeling of my true refuge being, feeling, being distant. And, and, and it will be painful, it should be painful. What you are witnessing is the truth of suffering. And as you witness this truth, because when I am distant from my true refuge, yes, that is suffering. Then there will naturally come within you a yearning, a natural yearning to be closer, but it will not be a superficial, superficial kind of closeness. You will, you will very adamantly not want superficial closeness. And it is because of the pain of the distance that will make it, that will make it that way. And there is something within you uh, that sees it at a very, it, 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 it's, it's very far away, but it, it, it is there. It's just at a distance. It's not that it's not there at all, right? It is at a distance. And the distance is creating this pain. So know the pain. When, when you say, when you're, when you're far from your true refuge, it is painful, it will be a, you will be speaking a truth. It will not be a, some sort of, of deep philosophy that you read somewhere in a book. You'll be true wisdom. And when you admit that, you're inviting wisdom. And uh, the meditation that we did, uh, I sometimes I do this meditation when, when exactly when I'm feeling this distant and I go deep into my emotions. I'm begging you, please make me feel you. I'm right near right now, I'm not feeling you. And I'm admitting what's going on. And I'm, I'm admitting what I'm aspiring to, what I'm desiring, what I'm wishing for. Okay. So that you don't take it for granted next time. Okay, how's that? Is that okay, Kirat? That's really helpful. Thank you. Okay. I really appreciated the um, like kind of this approach of softening that you spoke to, where it's mm -hmm. precisely the moment when we recognize, oh, I feel really disconnected from this, mm -hmm. that the actual pathway to feeling connected kind of appears, you mm -hmm. know, in that like very um, in like a kind of compassionate humility, like, oh, mm. this is really hard. And when we can rest there, it, it feels a little bit less difficult, I think. Yes. Thank you, Pumzak. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, because uh, I guess I was, I was strongly thinking of, I don't think I'll be able to do this. I don't think I'll be able to do this. <laughs> the headache, the body ache, the fever, the chill, and the just uh, feeling throughout the day. And uh, as I am doing this, it, I, I, there, was no th there was no awareness of any of those symptoms. So thank you.
So your presence is healing. Thank you. Okay. All right, so let's do our closing meditation. And Mr. Emmett, before we go, did we touch your... Um, I would say that I'm still uncomfortable, but that's not anything new. Um, <laughs> uh, and I think remembering that it, it does really go back to compassion, no matter what situation I'm encountering. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost frustrating that that one note that it keeps coming back to, but it's not wrong. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I just feel for, I feel that friction there, but not a bad one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, exactly. What is it that you're uncomfortable about? Um, I didn't expect myself to end up on this side of, of, of things, but I actually got nervous about like, oh, I don't know about what, if this vaccine is all it's made out to be, or if it's going to work, or if it's not, if it's got some other health concerns, if like, uh, like and then sure, that all part. And then this other thing of just, um, I've actually, like, personally within myself, I've had a somewhat tumultuous past year but it's been really good mm -hmm. um and I'm, I'm a little scared to go back to the i'm i'm scared to have the option open to go back and will i will i go back and and, and going like you know there, there's stuff that was back there that i want to get more of but, uh, but then there's also stuff back there that like wasn't really working that great so <laughs> it, i'm a little I, I feel like i'm on the precipice and um yeah it's a little funny like that yeah uh, uh there is uh something that you mentioned um Mm. Well, I'll just summarize it again. Uh, the world is going to continue to present us with many different things. And with if you think this is the worst that the world could have presented us, don't fool yourself, okay? There could be worse than that. And the thing is, how are you going to relate with what the world is presenting you? So it's not so much worry too much about what the world is giving you, but rather how you're responding to what the world is giving you, okay? That's where peace and safety resides in how we respond, how we relate with what the world gives us. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> uh, there's something else that you mentioned in the very beginning. Uh, I guess now nah, my mind is experiencing fogginess. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very frustrating thing when your mind says, you forgot something and you tell your mind, okay, what did, what did I forget? Tell me. <laughs> Say, but it's like, uh, why, why tell me that I forgot something and not tell me what I, what, why remind me about that I forgot something? Why don't you just tell me what I forgot? <laughs> yeah, the mind, mind is very tricky that way. <laughs> uh, well, when it comes back, I don't know, I'll relay it to you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, something about poisons. Mm. Uh, ah, never mind. Okay. All right. So let's uh, do a closing meditation. 
And thank you, everyone, for your healing presence. <laughs> so we're going to do the closing meditation the way we usually do. Remind yourself of when you were in meditation. Remind yourself how you felt in your body, how you felt in your mind. And by nearly remembering, you begin to feel again, you begin to reconnect. And when that sense of connection to the meditative state is present. Stabilize it with a nice deep breath, gently, fully through the nose, breathe in, staying connected to it. And then through the mouth, breathe out. And as you breathe out, let yourself go into it, 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 let go, let go, let go, let go. Notice the signs enhancing, notice the signs strengthening, rejoice. The signs of calm in the body, the signs of pleasantness, and the inner sensations may already be present for some of you. Acknowledge them, rejoice, and feel you where exactly where you are sitting. And what do you notice? You notice your thoughts, you notice your different parts of your body, right hand, left hand. These are the sensations, these are the somatic experiences that tells you, you. Hand is different from foot, head is different from torso, and yet they are all me. In the same way, the right hand instinctly wants to help the left hand, thinking I'm helping myself. Feel that, the instinct to go help the right hand to go left, to go help the left for the head, for the foot, for them to go help to each, help each other. Even though they're different, they still call themselves, it will still say me. Now, see all of us in your place, sitting in a circle. And begin to feel us. And just like the right hand instinctively wants to help the left hand, feel the instinct of, a, of you ready to go to help any one of us here and thinking that we're helping, you're helping us. And as the sense of us gets stronger and stronger, it begins to manifest as an actual presence in the center of our circle, as a bright presence. And our hearts are connected to that bright presence. We are nourishing it, it is nourishing us. That is, we are nourishing us, and the us is nourishing me. Me makes us. Us makes me. And this gets stronger and stronger. And the bright presence in the center of our circle begins to expand. And as it expands, whatever the light absorbs becomes identified as us. So the entire room where you are is absorbed in that bright presence and it continues to expand. Everyone in your home is absorbed in that light. Everyone in your neighborhood is absorbed in that light. And it continues to expand, absorbing the grass, absorbing trees, absorbing sky, continues to expand, absorbing mountains, absorbing rivers, absorbing oceans. All life, birds, quadrupeds, bipeds, they're all enveloped by this light 
and we have the strong sense of us, the same way we have the strong sense of me. The same instinct for the left to go to the help, aid of the right. We feel the same for the grass, for the trees, for the birds, for the mountains, for each other, for our neighbors. Until the entire earth is completely absorbed in this bright presence of us. And if you want, you can continue to expand this until it for you covers as much of existence as possible as you can. And feel the instinct for you to help any part of us. And get ready. Now, this bright presence begins to contract. And as it contracts, it leaves traces of its brightness, luminosity. And it continues to contract until it gets back to the very center of our circle. And everything is sort of smeared with the brightness. And at the very last moment that us in the very center, still connected to us through rays of light to our hearts, and now completely dissolves into each one of us. And when it does that, we feel that by taking care of me, I take care of us. And when I take care of us, I take care of me. And get ready to arise from the meditation before. Feel the energy of your meditation Consider whatever positive energy you may have gathered to this. And think of something that concerns you that you wish to address. It could be completely personal. It could be for someone you know. It could be for community somewhere. And as you feel that energy directed, dedicated to help address that concern. Gewa di kyokun Sunam Yeshe Tsodzok Shin Sunam Yeshe Lechowe Tamba Kunye Topal Sho. Oh, thank you very much. Whoever posted the uh, prayer on the shared screen. All right. So get ready to arise from the meditation. Take a nice deep breath. Breathe out the mouth. Ah, and feel reconnected with your immediate surroundings through your sense of touch, sense of hearing, and sense of sight. Ah, thank you. <laughs> All right, so I guess I'll see you guys uh, in two weeks. Okay. Be safe out there. <laughs> Thanks, Punsak. Thank you, Punsak. Thank you. <laughs> Feel better. Thank you. <laughs> now it's the coughing that's coming.
All right, who has the master? Who has the master power button? <laughs> 